Back into the routine of the, that league schedule, I guess. Uh, I mean, we're excited to get started. Obviously, it's a tough task ahead, I think. On the road in the Big East this year, because of the parity, is going to be especially hard. Uh, but it also, if you can go get one on the road, it, there's a lot of value to it because I, I'm not sure it's going to happen a lot. With this team, your two road games, started those first four or five minutes, looked good. But then there was that kind of lull in the middle. Is that uh, uh, related to being on the road, you think? Or, or uh, making I mean, too much I, of I it? Or? I, that's probably too much of it. It's just a couple games. and. Uh, you know, we did some good things at times at Nebraska. We did some good things at times against Oklahoma. But if you're going to beat a good team on the road, you better play for 40 minutes. Uh, and we haven't done that very much yet this year, uh, to be honest. And that's something we're continuing to work towards. You know, we've got some guys still trying to figure it out. Uh, until they figure it out, we're going to we're going to have some struggles during parts of games. Yeah, if you're inconsistent, it shows up at least on the road. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe I mean, it shows up at home. Too. Yeah, it's there. Too. It's yeah. there. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. I mean, is that a concern for you at this point, abnormally, you know, compared to the season's past? Well, I don't think it's abnormal because we're all, we're mostly freshmen and sophomores. So I, I think any team in the country, if you, you watch Kentucky play with all their young guys. I mean, there's, there's ebbs and flows to what they're doing because guys are young, and that's that's part of the process, and you can't lose sight of that. Uh, you have to continue to work to try to improve, to try to get better, uh, to make sure that when February and March rolls around, we're playing our best basketball. With, uh, I guess when you diagnose the matchup with Providence, how you match, how this group matches up with them specifically, what are some of the things that jump off in terms of what concerns you them? Well, their their physicality, obviously, you know, and they 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 do so much damage within six feet of the basket uh, with their you know some of the tight flex offense that they run, and uh, and because everything's run so close to the basket, you have all those bodies close to the basket when the shot goes up. So, rebounding is always a premium when you play them. I think taking care of the basketball is is a, is a premium all the time when you're on the road, but especially against Providence because. At times, they can they can be challenged to score, and those live ball turnovers, they do a pretty good job of turning them into baskets. What have you seen on film since UMKC, Oklahoma, maybe two games you could watch as far as a high turnover rate goes uh, from the players as far as how many of those mistakes you can live with or just how many? Are well, I, I don't like living with any of them, uh, but it's the problem is it's not there's not a common theme to what's happening. I mean, we have... I think we've invented ways to turn it over this year. Uh, so, I mean, we have to try to clean it up. We had some foolish ones today in practice that you really can't explain. Uh, you know, you're trying to throw a pass to something that isn't there. Uh, and, you know, we have to get better, and hopefully hopefully with maturity we do get better. They changed much at all. I mean, it's a small sample size, but without Reeves in the lineup, is it, it do you prepare any differently? No, uh, I mean, Reeves is averaging 14 a game. White took his spot. He's averaging 14 a game since Reeves has been out. Uh, so, I mean, really, he's stepped in. He's made threes. He's doing some things off the dribble. And he's a better defensive player than Reeves is. So they have their, their defensive numbers are much better uh, since Reeves' injury. So uh, it's not like I want him back in the lineup because he's really a talented offensive player. But, uh, you know, this is a good defensive team right now. They've been really good with their zone this year, um, and they've used it against you guys in the past to disrupt rhythm and stuff like that. What, what in your mind is the key to being as as effective as you can be against that length? Well, it's 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 the length that's a problem. I think I think their zone numbers are almost the best in the country this year, uh, and, and and it's exactly what you said. They have length in a lot of spots, so some of the passes that maybe you can get in practice against the same zone aren't there uh, when you, when you play against Providence and it. It's been amazing to me how many times Texas and Michigan and different teams that have played against them have gotten really late in the shot clock against their zone because it's it's really hard to kind of crack it early. Uh, but you know, hopefully with ball movement, you got to get it to the middle of the zone. I think any zone, it's important to attack it from there, and that's what we continue to work on as we move towards Monday. When you you, know, you mentioned a little bit the other day you know, after the game, but when you think about the teams that you've played. And, and haven't beaten, even though you wanted to get a couple of those. Can you remember a schedule from from your perspective that maybe has prepared you better, um, if any, than, than you've had this year? For this well, this is the best schedule we played during my time here. Um, and, you know, and sometimes you put together a schedule that you think is really good, and there's an injury or a transfer, and they don't. It doesn't end up being as good. And sometimes, um, you know, a, a schedule will kick its coverage, so to speak. You, you think it's okay, and it ends up being better. This one we thought was going to be good. It probably ended up being a little bit better. Uh, I don't think anybody thought Oklahoma would be quite the level the, that they've been. 
I don't think anybody saw that with Ohio State. Uh, but you know, obviously they're a top 15 team as well. We knew East Tennessee State was going to be good. We knew Montana returned everybody and, it, and is a favorite to win their league. And then, of course, Gonzaga and Nebraska returned a bunch of guys, and we knew they'd be good. So, um, you know, I think it accomplished what it needed to accomplish in terms of preparing us. Uh, Would have liked to get gotten a few more wins, but, you know, I think I said it the other night. I, I think we're in a better place as a team today than we would be had we played a lighter schedule and we were 11-2 and two instead of 9-4. and four. It's all about, right? Big East play getting going. I mean, what's the excitement level for you to kind of go through this the first time? Well, I'm really excited right now because it's my first Big East game. I mean, Big East conference game, so I'm really excited to play with my guys and see what it's all about. So when I first got here, they always talked about it. Big East is way tougher than the Mountain West, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> they made you, they made it known that, yeah. that the Big East is... Right. Yeah. So I'm excited. I mean, what, what do you expect out of, out of Providence after, after looking at them and starting to kind of break things down? Well, from watching them, I know they're going to they be a very physical, tough team, crash the glass hard, like one through, one through four, one through five, like all crash the glass. So we just got to be prepared and be ready for what they're going to bring to it. We know that they're tough. How important is your role you know, on the glass? Obviously, from your position, you've been able to rebound well this year. Does, does that you know, become a little bit more important against a team like this? Oh, yeah, yeah, really important because I know that they've that they got guys that can jump right, uh, high as me, and I know that i got to do my job, um, and that gets us going when I rebound and – uh, do do my job. I know that that can get us going. You've had a couple games. I feel like Oklahoma. You started really aggressive the, the other night. You started really aggressive. Is it? Um, is there something to that? Just getting off, to, trying to help this team get off to a good start. Oh well, yeah. I just got to turn it up a notch. I'm trying to turn it up a notch for myself and for the team. But I know that uh, once I get going, it get it get other guys going. Like when I start driving the lane, teams will close in on me, and I can just find my shooters. And I'm just trying to get going um, offensively and just. We'll do whatever I can do to help the team win. You guys want to space the floor. They kind of want to shrink it and bring everybody in the paint and have like a good old bar brawl in there. What? How important is it to dictate pace in this matchup, or at least get comfortable as much as you possibly can? It's really important because, like you said, we, we want to run and we want to space the floor. But um, the way they play, they want to close in. And but we know that if we do our job defensively and. Um, Knock them, knock them out their game plan and do what we want to do, execute coach's game plan, and we know that we can win the game. So it's really important for us to do what we have to do and what? execute. Go ahead, go ahead. I guess defensively, what's the most important keys in terms of guarding the tight flex? And like, I guess communication, things like that. Like, yeah. what, what in your mind are the things that you have to check off? Just like, um, you said, just, to... just like you said, it's communication. We know that if we can communicate well and uh, stop their flex, that we know that we can win the game. But um, they want, to, they want to close in, so we just got to do what we got to do and follow the coach's game plan, like you said. But um, we just got to communicate. You played uh, two road games against two really good teams, Oklahoma and Nebraska. What have you maybe learned about how to prepare for those games and, or maybe how to react in the moment when you're kind of facing adversity on the road? Well, like those two road games, we just let the crowd get us. I think we was rattled by the crowd because, like you said, it was a road game. So we just... I feel like we wasn't prepared. We wasn't really prepared for the crowd, and um, we let the crowd get to us. But um, we know that um, going into these places, is, they, they're all hostile environments, so we just got to be ready for whatever comes. Back at it now, Big East time. I mean, this is kind of you know what, what you're excited about, what, what you're here for. What do you expect out of this run through the conference? Oh, I expect a lot. You know, my teammates have been already uh, telling me a little bit about it, how we have to prepare and even focus in and lock in more, hold each other accountable. Um, I know every team is going to be a battle. And uh, we're all looking forward to it, and obviously I am too. And that's the re that's the really reason why I came here. So I'm excited. What uh, you know, obviously going on the road hasn't gone well so far for you guys. Part of that is you know uh, a big part of that is the teams that you're playing. But right. what do you learn from those trips, and, and how do you use that? I guess when you go and play another physical team. Here oh, absolutely. Um, every every road game we had has been a, a lesson. Uh, we learned a lot from it. Um, we we had to focus on the little things defensively. And clean up and be tougher automatically you know providence is a good team um last year obviously creighton played them in their tournament and it came down to the little things coach mack talked about all the time and that's what we were working on in practice and the off goes for you know really our whole schedule non-conference has prepared us for this the big east yeah, so um, that's ex we're excited about that you, uh, when you watch the film from like does nebraska that nebraska oklahoma game was that was it pretty glaring right away that the little things kind of made the difference in terms of them being able to build a lead was that Absolutely. Um, like you said, it, it was pretty verifying, and Coach Mack really pointed out the stat there too. And we kind of came to, came together as a group, just players, and 
focus on the little things and talked it out. And right. um, you know, talking is, is cheap. What we kind of said, we got to do it, and we will. It, it I mean, on the road in a different setting. I guess it kind of makes sense that you lose maybe some focus on the the basics. How do you kind of zero in, even though you're in a new gym with fans who are kind of going crazy and trying to distract you? I guess. Right. And off, off those games we played, we kind of learned to, to feed off that energy the fans are giving and turn that negative energy to positive. So we're going to use that positivity and um, try to focus that in on the simple things. And that and ultimately, those little things are going to add up to the big things. And we'll, we'll focus on that. You guys kind of want to make this pretty. They want to make it gritty. Like, right. How do you meet them close enough in the middle to where you guys can kind of control the, the terms of engagement, I guess? Uh, just play great in basketball. Um, play loose, play confident, play aggressive. I think that. But, but master intensity and master aggressiveness and be, be uh, who we are, be tough, and uh, ultimately match that toughness and we can do that. When you look at your uh, non-conference schedule that you guys went through and all the teams that you guys played and the mistakes you guys made, the losses you guys took, like how much did doing that against high-level competition throughout the last first two months do you think will prepare you for the final two months of the season? Honestly, I think it was really good for us, those losses. I mean. Now that those little things that we didn't do during those games showed up early in the season, now we can fix that, we can correct that, and, and uh, have a big impact on uh, conference play and going into post-tournaments. So, when you, look, when you look on film and you see the type of turnovers you guys are committing you know, in games, the ones that I think you think are probably repetitive, then, right. how do you clean that stuff up? In the show, I mean, you just turned the ball over 18 times like, and you played four days. Like, How do right. you... Maybe cut six of those off in such a short time, I guess. I think a lot of those turnovers, maybe 10 of them are on us, really. They weren't really forced. Yeah. So and coming in the gym early and doing drills uh, that Coach Mack has to do it before practice is kind of going to help us, you know, playing off two feet, um, slowing down the game a little bit. Obviously, creating plays fast, we do. We love that. But, you know, kind of simplifying the game and playing off two um, is, is what we have to do, and we will. Um, we're just not going to beat ourselves and turn the ball over uh, unforced. Sorry. I have you been playing the four all year? No, they actually just moved to the four okay. uh, before the last game. Okay. What's yeah. the biggest difference for you? Um, maybe more of an interior, like that spot. A little bit of, you know, guarding big guys a little bit. Uh, and I would say the spacing, my positioning offensively is a little bit different. I would trail a little more than I usually have instead yeah. of running to the corner. Um, but, I, I, you know, whatever Coach Mack says, I'm going to do to my best of my ability. I'm going to enjoy it. So. Thank you.